In the world of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's said stand abilities are the physical manifestation of one's inner spirit, and in one way or another will reflect their user's personality and ideals. But more often than not, it's a bit more complicated than that, as there are many ways a stand can manifest and what aspects of one's personality they will manifest from. And the sad truth of stand abilities is that they can often manifest from their user's own insecurities, fearful obsessions, and even the things about themselves they hate the most. Looking specifically at the members of Passione from the fifth part of JoJo, Golden Wind, Bruno's Gain of Misfits are a perfect example of the complexity involved in a stand's manifestation. Although all of the gain's members at their core are good people and dedicated their lives fighting for a cause greater than themselves as individuals, their stands don't always exactly represent that true nature of justice within them. For example, Abakio Leon's Moody Blues manifested from his obsessive feelings of guilt that dragged him into darkness and depression. He blamed himself for the death of his partner and wanted nothing more than to change his past, so when he became a stand user, he manifested his moody blues with the ability to replay events and look back into the past. Reflecting not Abakio's sense of justice, but his biggest tragedy and his obsession of replaying his past within his own head. And this is the tragedy of stand users. What you allow to consume you is what will define you, and ultimately your stand. And this tragedy is no more prevalent than within our subject of today's video, Passione's Panicata Fugo and his stand, Purple Haze. <laughs> As described by Abakio, Purple Haze is a stand that truly reflects its user's personality. It's an expression of Fugo's darkest emotions, the uncontrollable rage and anger within him he tries his hardest to suppress. It's the side of himself he hates the most, because it's a part of him he doesn't fully understand. And this results in Fugo resenting his own stand, trapping him in a cycle of self-loathing and lack of self-confidence. As every time Fugo sees his Purple Haze, he's reminded of what's inside and everything about himself he hates most. So to try and better understand this side of Fugo's personality, we'll have to look into his past. Which is pretty complicated, and not in the way you might think, but because there are multiple different interpretations of Fugo's past. There's the canon version from the original Golden Wind manga, which is pretty much non-existent, as the only insight we had on Fugo's early life was the research Aluso had done and restated during the Man in the Mirror arc, where we learn Fugo was born into a wealthy family and was a highly intelligent child being accepted into university at the age of 13, but then having a violent outburst and nearly killing one of his professors with an encyclopedia, and then eventually would end up joining Bruno's gang. So the canon version of Fugo's past is definitely lacking with little context and really no explanation of how he joined Passione. But due to Fugo's lack of development, an eventual premature departure halfway through Golden Wind inspired the light novel Purple Haze Feedback, a non-canon story set in the world of Jojo written by Kohei Kadono as part of Jojo's 25th anniversary of event versus Jojo, where Araki himself had challenged authors to create their own stories set in the world of Jojo. This event resulted in other works you may be familiar with, like the George Joestar novel and Over Heaven. But back to Purple Haze feedback, in this story, Fugo's past would be expanded upon in great detail and gives a much better reasoning for Fugo's internal rage while still following the same structure as the original manga, making sure not to retcon his character. So as established, Fugo was born into a wealthy family and was a gifted child being extremely intelligent, but this made his parents view him as more of a trophy rather than a person, and only cared about Fugo giving their family a good reputation through his accomplishments, more so than his personal well-being. And this began Fugo's feelings of self-hatred, viewing his gift of intelligence more as a curse as it was causing all of the terrible things that were happening in his life. But thankfully Fugo had his grandmother, who was the one person that saw him as more than just a trophy and cared for him like no one else had. But sadly, she passed away while Fugo was away at university and after hearing the news about his grandmother's death, he was devastated, and he wanted to return home for her funeral, but his request to return home was denied, further increasing Fugo's internal rage, and caused him to be distracted from his studies in his time of grief. And after being ridiculed by one of his professors for doing poorly on a test and completely disregarding Fugo's situation, pushed him to his breaking point, and attacked his professor with an encyclopedia, nearly killing him, unleashing his years of pent-up anger. This incident caused Fugo Fugo 
to be kicked out of school and disowned by his family as his actions would have brought their family a bad name, leaving him with nothing at rock bottom. But Fugo would later meet Bruno Buccellati, a man who saw Fugo's true worth, much like his grandmother, and this inspired him to join Passione. So that's the Purple Haze feedback version of Fugo's past, and although it technically isn't canon, it doesn't change or devalue Fugo's original backstory, it only adds more context and depth to his character, which in my opinion is much better. But with the recent Golden Wind anime adaptation, we now have another interpretation of Fugo's past. The anime's version seems to take inspiration from Purple Haze feedback, but because of possible time constraints wanting to keep all of the characters' backstories a similar length, some things were changed. Most obviously being the exclusion of Fugo's grandmother, though the concept of his narcissistic parents largely remained the same, but without Fugo being upset and distracted because of his grandmother's death, it was changed to him being sexually abused by one of his professors. Which again results in Fugo violently attacking his professor with an encyclopedia. After this, the anime follows Purple Haze feedback where Fugo would be kicked out of school and disowned by his family, left to eventually meet Bruno and join Passione. As well as being the first person who would join Bruno's subgain and recruit future members like Narancia. So as for the anime's version, it falls in between canon and non-canon because it's an adaptation of the original work and it's unknown how much influence Araki had on this addition to Fugo's character. But again, like Purple Haze feedback, neither of these interpretations retcon or diverge from the manga, they just give Fugo more development. So really, whatever version of Fugo's past you enjoy most and think works best for his character is up to you. But the common denominator between all interpretations that best explains the reason for Fugo developing his feelings of self-resentment is the expectations carried over him by his family and the mistreatment of him throughout his childhood that would ultimately manifest as the uncontrollable anger within Fugo that he would unleash upon the people around him and eventually be the same emotions reflected in his stand ability. Purple Haze's ferocious nature and animalistic behavior are very obvious representations of Fugo's rage, but the specifics of the stand's ability shows even more of how Fugo truly feels towards himself and act as a metaphor for his emotions. Purple Haze's ability is a flesh-eating virus that's densely stored in the capsules on the stand's fist, similar to how Fugo will keep his anger bottled up inside him, but once Purple Haze releases a capsule, its virus will begin to spread and uncontrollably cause damage to anyone it comes in contact with be it friend, foe, or even Fugo himself. Which is unlike most stands with area of effect abilities, Prosciutto for example is able to control his Grateful Dead to affect everyone except himself, but Fugo lacks the self-confidence and control to stop even his own stand from hurting him. Which causes Fugo to fear his purple haze even more as not only does he hate what it represents, but it's also more of a threat to himself than most enemy stand users, resulting in Fugo very rarely using his stand and only summoning it in the most desperate of situations, which was only one time in all of Golden Wind where Fugo was forced to use his Purple Haze in his fight against Iluzo, and in the process almost ended up killing his friends. But the other reason we had only seen Purple Haze be used once was due to Fugo's departure from Bruno's gain halfway through the part, where Bruno had declared he would be turning traitor against the boss, and gave each member of his team the opportunity to make their own decision free of any judgment, either join him and become traitors of Passione, which would almost certainly mean death or stay loyal to the organization. And every member of Bruno's team decided to join him, just like when they had each first met. All except for Panacata Fugo, who would be left behind to disappear into the past because of his inability to believe in himself, saying nobody in this world can survive on ideals alone. We can't live without the gain. And this would be the last time we see Fugo in Golden Wind, which just didn't feel right having one of our close friends so abruptly removed from the story without a proper conclusion and beg the question, why was Fugo subjugated to this fate? And this question would later be answered by series creator Hidehiko Araki in his Golden Wind author Afterthoughts, where he reveals that what we saw wasn't originally his intended plan for Fugo's character. He explains that in the beginning he planned for one of the members of Bruno's gang to be a spy working for the boss and eventually betray the team, and decided that Fugo would be the traitor. But Araki would later change this because of how a betrayal from a close friend made him feel. To quote Araki, he said, My state of mind was so dark that the stories I wrote were becoming more and more evil, but in my heart I started to hate this behavior as time 
time past. I absolutely can't understand betrayal from a trusted friend. And this is why just thinking about it physically hurt me. So instead of Fugo betraying his team, Araki made the decision for him to stay loyal to Passione, and in a way still betraying his friends by not believing in them and refusing to join them in their fight for a better future, knowing very well that most of them would die fighting for this cause. But having Fugo stay behind was a much less cold-hearted and understandable form of betrayal compared to what Araki had originally planned, of Fugo completely backstabbing the people who considered him a friend only to realize the relationship was built on lies. So although Fugo's abandonment initially felt like an unsatisfying conclusion for the character, in retrospect, it starts to make a lot more sense when seeing how thematically appropriate it was. Every member of Bruno's gang was dealt a bad hand by fate, but each character was able to accept their fate and not let it define them, and would rise from the ashes of their past to become the strong, true-hearted people people we meet in Golden Wind. But Fugo was unable to accept himself for who he was, and he didn't embrace his stand as a gift like the other members. So when it came time for each character to make a decision void of self-doubt and truly believe in themselves and each other that they could defeat the boss, Fugo was the only person unable to do so. Still living in the shadow of his past self, filled with resentment and hesitation, so he chose abandonment as he watched his friends depart without him. And this is the tragedy of Panicata Fugo. Not everyone in JoJo gets a happy ending, but it's almost a perfect conclusion for the character Fugo was. And that's the video guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed. There was a few other things I want to mention in it, like expanding upon Purple Haze feedback, as well as another novel, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 2 Golden Heart Golden Rain, that came out shortly after part 5 finished, and it tells the story of Fugo's betrayal from Araki's original notes. But as I was writing my script, I just couldn't really find a good place to fit these topics in, as I didn't want to focus too much on non-canon material, because I thought they would have diverged too much from the original video's point, which was Fugo's character, within the canon of part 5, and I also had a pretty big segment on Fugo's past from Purple Haze feedback, so it just didn't really work, but I guess post-production thoughts would be a good place to tell you guys about this stuff. So as for Purple Haze feedback, I just wanted to give it a massive recommendation, as it's a really great story, and even better if you're a fan of Fugo. It takes place 6 months after Fugo abandoned the game from the original part 5 manga, and Giorno is now the new leader of Passione, and he tracks down Fugo and gives him a second chance to prove his loyalty to the game, but before he can read join, he must execute the remaining members of Passion's narcotics team. And throughout this story and Fugo's mission, you meet a lot of great characters and a lot of great stand users. And like we talked about in the video, Fugo gets more development, you learn more about his past, and some interactions with him and Bruno are changed quite a bit. So if you're a fan of non-canon, spin-off stories, stuff about Fugo, go ahead and read that. And as for the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 2 Golden Heart Golden Rain, the one thing I want to mention about it is actually something that's not even in the novel itself, but it's just like a fun fact that you learn about the betrayal arc is that originally what Araki had planned is that he, when Fugo betrayed the game it was going to be Giorno that would be the one that would kill him and Araki thought this was so dark he didn't even include it in the spin-off novel it was even changed in that too but just thinking about how dark that would be, Giorno actually killing Fugo is insane, and you can actually see the ripples of this happening in the source material in part 5, where Giorno becomes immune to the Purple Haze virus during the Man in the Mirror arc. So later, when he would actually fight Fugo, he would be able to defeat him because he wouldn't be able to be affected by Purple Haze. So that's just a fun little fact. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything about Fugo I have to talk about. And just one last thing, the artwork in this video that illustrated Purple Haze feedback of Fugo's past was a commission I made to Dorito meet back again. This is becoming a thing now. Dorito's been doing so much artwork for my videos and it all always looks amazing. So that artwork was created specifically for this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. All, all the things I do for you guys. Otherwise it would have just been text or nothing on screen during that segment. So it was, it had to be done, you know? Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day guys. Peace. Thank you.